WQEMS is about the Water Quality Emergency Monitoring Service, which is supposed to be an add-on to the EMS for open surface water reserves that are used for the production of drinking water by the water utilities industry. The five pilot areas are located in Greece, Italy, Spain, Germany, Finland. According to the latest Water and Framework Directive classification, most parts of the lake are not in good ecological condition. Loading from agriculture, peat production and industry is an ongoing problem and algal blooms occur regularly. Past research in the reservoir has shown that it is mesotrophic to eutrophic with incidence of phytoplankton blooms and pollution phenomena from nearby pipes such as the presence of oil spills. The drinking water treatment plants of the area are very challenged by rapid water quality changes or potential risk such as water turbidity generated by heavy rainfall or the presence of cyanobacteria as they can produce toxin in the water. In this tank in 2005, a huge cyanobacterial bloom was detected, causing emergency operational uh, problems in the in our facility. And uh, also in uh, the last three years, hydrocarbon spills were also detected in this tank. Uh, also causing us uh, various uh, problems in the treatment process. The WQMS system will bring to life the main objective of the project that is to enable the optimization of the use of resources by gaining access to frequently acquired, wide covering and locally accurate water status information. Exploiting earth observation and non-earth observation data but also social media and crowdsourcing capabilities. The five platform services are Water quality features changes Water quality features that can be estimated through this service are Chlorophyll A, turbidity, water surface temperature, Sekai disk depth, and colored dissolved organic matter. Bloom events detection the Bloom Events Detection Service line is focused on identifying and monitoring of harmful algae blooms formed by cyanobacteria with potential of producing toxic compounds. Frequently updated information will lead to faster decision-making about the risks by HAB changes and tuning of the treatment accordingly. Extreme Events Detection The Extreme Events Service aims at identifying hydrocarbon formations or floods and muddy waters on the surface of open surface water reservoirs. The novel algorithm is specifically developed to target small-scale oil spill or flood events in inland waters. Land Water Transition Zone Change Detection The Land Water Transition Zone Changes Detection Service will perform inundation mapping at areas of interest. Detect possible changes that took place between dates or seasons and calculate the inundation regime of the land water transition zones. Alerting module. A mobile app where end users are able to post text, photo, and location of an occurring water-related issue will be developed. A social media crawler that collects public Twitter posts that refer to water-related incidents will be utilized to search for emerging instances at the water reservoir. The WQEMS system will bring to life the main objective of the project that is to enable the optimization of the use of resources by gaining access to frequently acquired wide covering locally. Accurate water service information exploiting Earth observation and on Earth observation data, but also social media and crowdsourcing capabilities.
WKMS is a platform which provides an operational water quality emergency monitoring service, exploiting Sentinel data. The main access point to the platform for the user is the web portal. Each of the services, functionalities and tools are described in a dedicated page, which is reachable by clicking on the related cards on the home page. Each service is described including results, gains, specifications and a preview of the geospatial maps. In order to request a service, the user should be registered and authenticated. At this point, it is first of all requested to select the water body to be monitored by uploading a shapefile containing one or more areas of interest or by selecting from a list of water bodies that were already specified by the user in a previous request. A section related to the selection of services includes four main areas related to each of the main service components. For each of these, a list of sub-services with the related parameters is present. For each service, the user can specify the on-demand or the continuous to monitoring modality. The continuous mode continuously monitors water bodies, generates geospatial maps each day and detects water-related issues. On the other hand, the on-demand mode is about the generation of one-off geospatial maps of a given area at a given time. In the example, the user is selecting the two dates and hydroperiod services of the Land Water Transition Zone Change Detection Service. As soon as the request gets accepted by the administrator, the user can visualize the generated data through the map and data navigator. It enables to visualize on a map the different parameters, providing information regarding the specific values for each pixel. It is able to generate histograms and pie charts that depict statistics related to the overall area visualized. If available, it is possible to select geospatial maps of multiple dates and compare multiple water bodies through pie charts by selecting the different parameters. In the example, it is shown a comparison of how much water to land and land to water areas of the Jaretta Lake are detected in two different periods of time thanks to the two-date service of the land water transitions and change components. It is possible to animate the flood state of products, which in the example refers to the Jaretta Lake, and also visualize the related metadata directly by clicking on the user interface. In the metadata, there is a lot of information, including the quality of the data generated, such as the kappa coefficient, represented through the quality ML vocabulary, which is also described in a dedicated wiki. The user can also provide feedback to the specific data layer. For example, if there are some data products that cannot be well understood or the data product has some issues in visualization, then the user can leave a comment. There are also other ways through which the user can navigate and download data products. The file server enables the navigation and the download of TIFF and XML files as generated by the system. These are all data products that users are able to access to if they have the permission. You can also use the FDPS directory provided by the platform. In this example, it is showed how to use the Fuzzilla client to connect to it. By using the same credentials that the user used to access the web portal, the one can list and navigate to the different folders and download each file. The platform also offers a OGC WMS endpoint, which is provided by an internal geo server. If the user owns a GIS or a DSS, the one can import this data flow directly in that system, selecting the specific data layers and the different granules and dimensions provided by the platform. The catalog is a web application that enables users to search and visualize the data products generated in the platform by providing an open view of the metadata referred to data products for water body monitored and service. 
Upon accessing the catalog, the user is able to view WKMS resources such as products, description, and metadata related to the different open surface water bodies monitor, grouped by themes and categories. The catalog is useful to understand which kind of information the WKMS system can generate and access to data products. The detail page of a data product includes an example image, quality information, contributors, and other context information. It is possible to export in XML format all of the provided information. The crowdsourcing mobile app is an Android application that offers citizens an intuitive way to report water-related issues. This is done by filling a simple form to define the description and the location of the water issue and possibly attach an associated photo. Instead of a possibly lengthy conversation on the phone, the water operator will instantly have the complete necessary details as posted via the app. Thus, the water company will save human and, at the same time, improve its image since they will facilitate water consumers to submit their complaints. In this example, the user is reporting a complaint related to the tap water quality, which has a strange color. The app enables the user to select the location by taking the one of the mobile phone or by selecting and searching this information through the Google Maps appears. The user is also attaching a photo to enrich the complaint. These complaints are then visible on the crowdsourcing dashboard, a friendly web interface that visualizes on a map the alerts scattered from the platform and offers filtering capabilities. The platform is also able to collect crowdsourcing data from Twitter and from the Citizen Observation Database SITOBS of the Finnish Environment Agency. All this data is elaborated for the identification of potential water issues. Alerts are generated and notified to the water utility operators. In the dashboard, the user can decide to visualize alerts from Twitter, the crowdsourcing mobile app, and SITOBS by toggling the switches on the interface. Additionally, the user can specify a time frame to visualize alerts only from this time period. Also, the user can select to visualize alerts based on the event type and the tweet language. Users can also receive alerts based on statistical values obtained analyzing the produced geospatial maps. In this example, the user received an alert email notifying that the value of turbidity detected on Polyphytos Lake in Greece exceeds a predefined threshold. Then through a dedicated link, it is possible to access the data products that generated this alert in order to investigate the situation. It is possible to customize the alerting functionality through a dedicated section in a portal. The user can create multiple alerts configurations, each of which is related to one water body. In the configuration form, it is possible to add multiple rules. Each rule is related to a phenomenon, for example, turbidity includes a statistical measure and a relationship. In the example, the user wants to be notified if the mean spatial value of turbidity detected on the Iben stock water body is greater than 25 NTU. The second rule informs the platform to generate an alert if the mean spatial value of the chlorophyll parameter exceeds the 18 ngm3 value. It is possible to be notified also if specific categories of alerts related to the crowd are detected. Last, a notification method should be selected by specifying between email or API endpoint of an external system with the possibility to select more than one. The new alert configuration is created and the details can be seen by clicking on the related button. Another functionality provided by the platform is the possibility to generate PDF reports sent by email containing aggregated statistical data about one or more parameters and services applied on a water body during a specific time interval. In this example, the user is specifying an interval of one year on the Gerita water body in Italy, including multiple parameters related to the water quality, extreme events, and land water transition zone services. By clicking on Submit, the platform generates and sends a PDF to the specified email address. The report is structured in several sections. First, an introductory sentence summarizing the water body and the period specified by the user when requesting the report. Then, there are tables in which each row is a statistical measure related to the service components aggregated over the period specified. Last, you can find time series graphs that show the trend of each measure during the period specified by the user. 
Finally, the platform provides a set of mechanisms to integrate functionalities into existing decision support systems in use by water utilities. A dedicated set of API are available for service execution requests, alerts configuration and retrieval, request reports generation, data product and associated statistics scattering. Moreover, to be compliant with legacy systems, the platform provides OGC web services and points which enable to access data using popular, well-established standards.